The presidential election is over, and I'm worried, not because of the outcome of the election. No, no, because I've got nobody, nobody calling me on the phone every Saturday to tell me how important I am. And I'm also worried about who is going to pay for all those commercials that are needed to keep the television networks in business. Well, the food industry and those who care about food safety have their own worries now that the election is over. They want to know what's going to happen with all of those rules and guidances that have been hanging around all year because the administration has been reluctant to push the go button on them reportedly out of fear that they might be used as political ammo in the election. Now that the election is over, no need to hold back anymore, right? Well, actually, I'm worried about that too, because it will be our job at Food Chemical News to read and write about all those big regulations, even if they all come at the same time. Please, not right before Christmas. Hello, I'm Jason Huffman, the editor of Food Chemical News, and you're watching The Knife and Fork Show. One of the agencies that has quite a few regulations pending is the USDA and its Food Safety and Inspection Service Division. Here to tell us what they expect to see from USDA in the next few months, and perhaps the beginning of the year 2013, now that the election is over, is our USDA beat reporter, Amber Healy, and also from the Consumer Advocacy Group, Food and Water Watch, Senior Food Policy Analyst, Tony Corbo. Amber, uh, just a week ago, we had a big article about this and you talked about some of the things that you expect to see coming from USDA over the next couple of months and potentially the beginning of next year. What are you looking for? One of the things I think USDA has been waiting for um, after the election to release is the final rule on the HIMP program. Uh, that's the HACCP based inspection models project and it would allow for uh, poultry companies to run faster line speeds and process more birds. That's why I keep you around to remember those acronyms. That is why you keep me. Um, <laughs> So I think USDA has been waiting on this because it was seen as very controversial. Um, consumer groups, the inspectors union, they were pretty much dead set against this. They think this is going to cause more foodborne illness and it won't provide as much protection to consumers. The industry loves this idea because it'll allow them to produce more chickens and get more money. Right. Um, I think USDA has been waiting on this and I think that now the election's over, it could come at any time. Was this the issue I asked you to bet your uh, un unpurchased house on before? <laughs> I think it was, yeah. yeah. And what do you think now? I'm still not betting the house I don't have on it. Um, I think it'll come out. I think that... This is the expansion. This of is expanding we already it. have hemp. That's right, in about and 20, 25 plants. And it affects a certain percentage of the produce that we eat. What was it? B the poultry, right. Yeah. Um, produce, poultry. I don't remember the, the number P offhand. It's, yeah. it's a significant portion. Not overwhelming, it's not 50%, but it's, it's fairly significant. It was 15 or 20. Something in like that, yeah. something in that ballpark, yeah. Um, I think it'll come out now, um, especially now that we have Jack Kingston has been reelected to his seat in, in the House. He is a huge champion of this. He loves this idea. Assuming he comes back and takes the chairmanship of that uh, that's appropriations correct. subcommittee. Again, um, that's everything I've heard, right, everything I've heard so far seems to indicate that. Uh, I haven't heard anything to the contrary, and it's, right. it's a job that he loves, the appropriations subcommittee in, at the House. Um, I think, I think we'll see it in the next couple of months. Now, the final rule has to be sent to the White House Office of Management and Budget for mm -hmm. review before it can be published. And OMB could take 90 days or more that to review that. That hasn't happened yet, has it? No, it hasn't. Mm -hmm. um, as of this morning, when I last checked, no, it hadn't been sent over yet. Tony, I know you're a big fan of hemp. <laughs> it's an understatement, Jason. <laughs> no. what, what's going to happen with it? Well, uh, And how do you really feel about it? Uh, well, our organization has, uh, was opposed to it um, on, on the very principle that you're, privatization, uh, you're privatizing uh, food inspection. You're, you're taking trained USDA inspectors uh, off the line and replacing them with, with um, uh, plant employees. Essentially, to, to, to the companies will be self-regulating themselves. And um, the, 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 the interesting thing is that uh, in, in the proposed rule, uh, USDA went out of its way to say that they were not going to require that the companies train their plant employees to take the jobs of the USDA inspectors. So that that is a big problem uh, with us right off the bat. Um, 
The other thing is that uh, the agency really hasn't proven that this is going to improve food safety. Uh, the rates of salmonella in, um, in these hemp plants, actually in the last two years of comparison, when they compared them to comparably sized uh, plants that receive traditional inspection, the salmonella rates were higher in these hemp plants. And on the issue of Campylobacter, which is, which is, a, which is a, um, a foodborne uh, disease that, that uh, is prevalent in poultry, and, and, the, and the agency just set standards for, for, for that particular disease, um, the agency could not make a prediction as to whether the, the rates would go higher or lower using this, this privatized inspection model. Right. So we're opposed to it. There's another issue here. The fact that they're going to allow the companies to increase their line speeds to 175 birds per minute. That means that, that there, there will be one USDA inspector at the, at the end of the production line. But that means that one inspector will, will have to inspect each bird in a third of a second. Mm. And well, so, uh, well, let me stop you right there because we're going to go through about two more subjects, and I know yeah. you could go on and on and on yeah. about him because you love it so much. Yeah, right. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but uh, we are going to have to have someone coming on from the poultry industry eventually to defend him. Right. I think just for balance purposes. We'll, there's your invitation, uh, NCC. Send somebody onto the show, and we'll, we'll mm -hmm. talk to them about him yeah. as well. Um, let's tackle another issue. What else have you got on your list? Uh, another thing that I think has been sort of waiting in the wings, um, maybe not as controversial at large as the, the, the prospect of expanding hemp, and that's HACCP validation. Uh, this is something that the agency has been working on for the past few years. And basically what it's doing is putting forth guidance to say, you've got your HACCP plan, show us how it works, show us why you feel it's going to work in the way that it's, that it's supposed to work. Uh, show your work, basically. Um, show us your documentation. Um, the agency first put out a draft on this in early 2010, and it was so badly done that several members of several U.S. DA uh, officials came up in front of an auditorium at, at the USDA offices and said, we really messed this up. It was more confusing than we wanted it to be. We're going to take it back. We're going to try this again. And they sent it out again. They sent it out again in, in early this year, early 2012. Um, it received only like 20, 25 comment letters that I saw. And there were still some concerns that USDA did the not sufficiently. generally was happier with the second take on it. That's my For the most part. But they, they did have some other issues that they still felt needed to be resolved. One of the top among those concerns um, is that USDA has yet to say that, not having gone through a HACCP validation before, that there's a food safety concern here. Um, USDA is responsible for protecting food safety, and yet if they can't make a connection, why are they putting, the, putting processors through all of these hoops and, and making them go through this long, extensive process? The industry, some members of the industry are also concerned that a, an inspector coming in to do his daily rounds will find everything fine. And then six months later, there'll be a food safety assessment, which is a really in-depth, detailed investigation, and find everything wrong. Okay, just one more minute. So I want to get one more issue. Sure. And this is the one I really want to spend a little bit of time on, so I'm going to kind of go a little bit long on this. Okay. Um, Antibiotic-resistant salmonella. Mm -hmm. What's going to happen? I think this is the sleeper. I think this is the one okay. that people have maybe forgotten about. Um, in 2011, the Center for Science and the Public Interest petitioned USDA asking for the agency to declare as adulterants four different strains of antibiotic resistant salmonella. Uh, salmonella Hadar, Salmonella Heidelberg, Salmonella Typhimerium, and Salmonella Newport. These have been linked with illnesses, but they're not considered adulterants at this point. Um, if a product is found to be contaminated with antibiotic resistant salmonella, of those four strains in particular, a recall will be initiated. Um, the most high profile of this was back in August of 2011 when 80 people got sick after eating contaminated ground turkey. Mm. Um, Genio, a major turkey company, right. they changed their advertising to have a little note on the bottom saying, you know, cook to 165 to make sure that you would kill anything there. Right. Um, USDA has not addressed or answered CSPI's petition. Um, I think this might be the time. Uh, former Undersecretary of Food Safety Richard Raymond told me last week that he feels that if the agency is ever going to take a stand on this, that current Undersecretary Elizabeth Hagan and FSIS Administrator Al Almanza might have the strong enough spines to do it. Yeah, and, 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 and we're supportive of the CSPI petition. Uh, when when HACCP um, was uh, uh, brought into being in, in the, uh, the mid-1990s, one of the um, uh, facets of that rule was to have salmonella performance standards that were enforceable. The industry legally challenged that, those standards 
and knock them out. So, so, so for FSIS to hold the industry accountable for salmonella, you have to declare it as an adulterant. And so it makes sense since you have these four antibiotic resistant strains that, that are difficult to treat because by their very nature, um, they are superbugs. Uh, this would be the, a positive step for the agency to take. Okay, well, 10 minutes goes fast here. We didn't get to all the subjects that we wanted to cover. There's a zillion more things that are happening that are likely to happen mm -hmm. at the USDA in the next couple of months. Um, I just you have to read the newsletter, I guess. <laughs> so that's all the time we have. Stay tuned because Amber and Tony are coming back for another conversation, this time about an investigation into whether a certain kind of pet treat might be causing the illness and even death of our best friends.